Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen from the Clayton Candle Company. Since launching my website, business has been so good that I'm out of most items on my website. So today I'm going to be restocking. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll see why I got started making soy candles and how I started making them in my kitchen, and still do. So today while I'm restocking my website, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to teach you at home how you can make your own candles in your own kitchen. So let's get started on what you're going to need. And don't worry about writing any of this down because I'm gonna link everything down in the description. So first you're going to need soy wax. Now I use Golden Wax 464. It is 100% all soy wax, all natural and it is perfect for the containers that I am using. Now, I do buy my wax in bulk, but I believe the smallest amount you can get is five pounds. All right, so next you're going to need candle wicks. Now, I use pre-tab wicks, and I'll go over in another video all the different sizes of wicks and what is best to use for the container that you're using. But for today, this is what I'm using. Next, you're going to need wick stickers. Now, they are a little bit more expensive, but your end product is actually gonna be better. You could use hot glue, but I found that it doesn't work as great as the stickers do. All right, so next you're going to need containers. Now, for this demonstration, I will have multiple sizes. You at home will probably have one size for all of your candles. Okay, so next you need fragrance oil. Now, I'm using one fragrance oil today. Now, normally in my candles, I use multiple fragrance oils to make one scent, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to use one. I am using Candle Science Clean Cotton, which is also my luxury linen on my website, and I absolutely love the smell, and it gives a great hot throw. Okay, next you're going to need something to not only measure, but pour into the wax. So, this I use for one fragrance oil. This one I use for multiple fragrance oils when I'm mixing because this is a one ounce and we're going to need two ounces today. Okay, so next you're going to need a candy thermometer. Now I do recommend that you keep the sleeve on the thermometer until you are absolutely going to use it because they do break easily and you do not want glass in your candles. All right, so next you're going to need a candle pitcher. Now, I use this in the beginning. I don't use this anymore because this only holds two pounds and I'm making them in really large batches, but it's perfect for beginners and just getting started. This is what you're gonna put the wax in, where you'll melt the wax, and you will also put the fragrance oil in. Okay, so next you're also going to need some kind of scale. Now, I use a shipping scale that I bought from Harbor Freight that's fairly inexpensive. Not only does it weigh my packages, but it also can weigh my candle wax. Okay, so then we're going to come over here and we're going to need a pot with a quarter inch or so of water in it, and this will be used as a double boiler later. Um, you're also going to need something that you can stir your fragrance oil in the wax. Now, <laughs> I use chopsticks because I used to own a restaurant. I have an abundance of them. So that's what I use and then I just throw them out afterwards. Okay, so the last thing you're going to need is popsicle sticks and a drill. So you're going to actually drill a hole through the popsicle sticks and this will be used when the wax is cooling to make sure that the wicks stay straight and that they cool off with the wicks straight in the container. And that's all you'll need. Okay, so now that you know what you need, let's get started. So the first step is we're going to want to measure out two pounds of wax in our pitcher. So what I do is I always put the pitcher on the scale before I turn it on. Now you could always use the tear button, but the most important thing is that when the pitcher is on the scale that it reads zero. Okay, so now we're ready to put the wax in. So I try not to waste any wax, so I try to get as close to the pitcher as possible. So this way it doesn't fall out. Now the wax may stick to your hand and that's okay, it'll come off. All right, and now we have about two pounds in here. Okay, so it should look like this. And now we are ready to put it on the stove. So what you want to do is, is 
turn your stove on to high, and then put the pitcher onto the side of the pot. I usually hook it so this way it doesn't float everywhere. You will also want to grab your thermometer, take the sleeve off, and what you should do is attach it to the side of the pitcher, like so. This way, we can see what the temperature is. We're looking for the wax to melt down and for the temperature to reach 185 degrees, and that is when we will add the fragrance oil. So we want this to come to a rolling boil, like so. Okay. So now that that's going, there's a few things that we can do in the meantime. So let's start off with the containers. So I'm gonna take my container and the wick and a wick sticker. I'm going to take one of these stickers and put it at the bottom of the wick. Then I'm going to remove the sticker from the other side and put it into the center of the container and then press down around the wick. Okay, so this one is all set. So continue to do this for all of your containers and then gather all of your containers and we'll bring them over to the stove top where we will start to preheat them. If you've chosen a larger candle container, you may need more than one wick, and you're going to put them in like so, in the form of a triangle. Now it's time to preheat our containers. So what you wanna do is, is turn the stove on to the lowest setting possible. We are just trying to warm the containers. We do this because when you pour hot wax into a cold container, it does not create a smooth professional finish. It's very bumpy. By warming them and just warming them, you will get a professional smooth finish on top after the candle has cooled. Now, if you do get a bumpy finish, I will create a video on what you can do to fix this. But in the meantime, for best practice, you wanna try and warm your containers. Okay, so our wax has reached a temperature of 180 degrees. So in the next minute or so, it should reach 185. In the meantime, we're going to start to pour our fragrance oil. There are advanced calculations when it comes to how much fragrance oil you should use for your candles. But for this tutorial, which is a beginner tutorial, we're gonna use the rule of thumb of one ounce per pound of wax. Now we use two pounds of wax, so we're gonna use two ounces of fragrance oil. Okay, so now it's at 185 and it is time to pour the fragrance oil. So I like to get every last drop of the fragrance oil. And now you just stir it up. So now you're going to want to turn the burner off and then I actually push the pot back so that it cools down faster. We're waiting for it to get to 135 and then we can pour it into our containers. So now while the wax is cooling, we're going to set up the popsicle sticks on the wick. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the wick and put it through the hole in the popsicle stick. And you wanna slide the popsicle stick down until it hits the container. And then what you'll wanna do is push it off to the side so that this way when you're pouring the wax, it can go in and then you can fix it to the center. But for right now, we're just gonna leave them off to the side. For the three wick containers, what you'll wanna do is, is make a 
triangle with the popsicles so this way when you pour the wax you can pour it straight down the middle. To accelerate the cooling process, I take the pitcher out of the water and you're going to want to dry off the bottom because it's going to drip. Just watch, it'll still be hot. Oops. And I'm going to sit it down on the cool part of the stove top. So now we just kind of wait. I usually check back every 10 to 15 minutes and we're looking for the wax to drop to 135. 135 is the perfect pouring temperature. It's gonna give you a very smooth and professional finish. Okay, so it looks like we're at 135 and now it is time to pour. You wanna make sure that you are pouring slow and steady in the middle of the candle. Now, my containers have a line, so I'm going to pour to the line. Depending on which container you have will depend on how much you pour. I normally start off with the big containers and then go over to the small one and then finish up pouring all of the candles. You may have a little bit left over at the end and I just go around and top them all off. Now you want to make sure that you straighten the wicks back out so that the wax cools with the wicks straight. Okay, so now it's been about three hours and they are finally to a point where we can clip the wicks. Now, what I do recommend is that you let them cure for at least 24 hours. What I'm going to do is actually just move them off my stove onto the counter and I'm gonna let them sit there for 24 hours. You don't want to have any temperature fluctuations, you don't want to burn them, and you don't wanna ship them anywhere if you are looking to sell them. So now we are going to remove the popsicle sticks. Now that you've removed the popsicle sticks, you'll want to cut the wicks down. I'm using a pair of wire cutters and I'm going to leave a little less than a quarter inch of wick. It's easier if you use the tips of the wire cutters. Just a quick tip, soy wax has a memory. So you wanna make sure the first time that you are burning your candle, that you are burning it long enough to where the wax melts and touches the outside of the tin or whatever container that you have. If you don't do that, the next time you go to burn your candle, it will only have a wax pool to the previous burn, which means you'll have excess wax all around the candle and you won't really be able to burn it. And here is our finished product. Looks great, right? Okay, that's it. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like it down below. And if you have any questions about the process or anything, be sure to comment down below and I will be happy to help. If you're looking for more videos on soy candles, how to make soy candles in your kitchen, or how to start your own candle making business, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell so you're notified when I make new content. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next one. Hey, if you're interested in why I use soy wax, check out this video right here. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.